Now, one of you is going to have to explain this to me. So basically, when I check the reviews for uh, Rings of Power on Amazon Prime on desktop, it tells me it's currently now on three and a half stars with, I think it's about 13,000 reviews. But then if you check on the app, the app is telling you that it's three stars out of five and there's actually 2.9K ratings. So uh, not entirely sure what's uh, going on there. Not sure which one to distrust more. If one of you wouldn't mind letting me know what that's about, I'd be uh, I'd be happy to know. So episode four is here and here we go. But it starts with, uh, starts with a bang, doesn't it? Every single last one of those plebs on Numenor consumed by a great wave. <laughs> Eh? It's just a dream. It's just a dream. Boo! Let them all die. Boo! Now this is posed as a nightmare, a bad thing, a, a premonition of what's to come. Now we all know. Spoiler alert. We don't all know. Sorry. Um, this is the inevitable fate of Numenor. But the thing is, if it were to actually happen now, rather than later, if it happened now, it would actually kill Sauron as well. So I'm sorry. I mean Halbrand. Halbrand. But you know what I mean? It probably would actually make life better for more people in Middle Earth because Sauron would never. <gasps> Did get Galadriel as well. Ah, oh, how are you going to tease us like that, Amazon? Now, in my past reviews of Rings of Power, I've uh, occasionally decided to mock Galadriel for wanting a staring competition with uh, absolutely everything. But the Queen Regent as a B tier, have you ever had a staring competition with a, a natural disaster before? I didn't think so. And you know, I know this show is made by Amazon and everything, but I thought it was quite cheeky that they, they slid in a little note just to let, you know, people know they're still hiring for their warehouses. Uh, what, kind, what kind of workers is it that you want, Amazon? Workers who don't sleep, don't tire, don't age. Now prepare your eyes and minds because you're about to witness some of the most subtle allegory you've ever seen. I don't want you to miss it. For by the calluses on my hands, I swear that elven hands will never take Numenor's helm. Yay, yay, racism. Good racism, bad. But yay, good, good racism. Bad, bad racism. This is truly a work of genius. Ah, uh, it would appear we're going a bit Game of Thrones with the whole you know, questionable overdubbing. Like, even someone who has no idea about anything to do with audio recording is going to be able to tell that this is overdubbed. Crowdy can't turn, a favor he isn't owed. It's impressive. You vex me, elf. Yeah, same. Now, through the past reviews, I think I've quite comprehensively laid out each and every single one of my gripes with uh, Galadriel, but here goes again. Her face literally doesn't move. Not an inch besides a mouth, nothing moves. And on the rare occasion that she does decide to move something that isn't a mouth, this is when we get hit with that guinea pig face where she goes like that. <laughs> and then Galadriel forgets that she's actually in Rings of Power and not that so Raven. Then I have little choice but to ask for another. What just happened? <laughs> Dialogue. Ah, yes, the infamous line. There is a tempest in me. Move your face, Galad it Galadriel. Move your face. Move, move your face. Your face isn't moved. Are you stuck? Are you, fro you. Are you frozen in time? And then Galadriel is locked up under suspicion of being a Karen. Don't tell me. Tavern brawl. Sedition. <laughs> Yeah, hi there guys, my name's Johnny. I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be auditioning for the role of Galadriel in uh, season two of Rings of Power. <sighs> Sedition. Do, do you think I get it? Do you, I, I think, I, I nailed that, right? Right? And I know it's a difficult feat to make this show even more harder to watch than it already is, but as soon as you realize that Galadriel's face is paraplegic, you can't unsee it. Even dramatic music doesn't help her. Hey Johnny, why aren't you talking about the bits with the sealed door in it? It's because they're... <laughs> Not to mention it's like watching a crappy British soap opera. Is this like... Is this Rings of Power or is it Hollyoaks? What is this? You just set our whole lives on fire! Oh, is that chamber pot? I think I'm gonna be sick. Bruh. Look at this dude. And we're back with Aaron Deer and he's found himself in the front row of a Slipknot concert. Yeah, don't worry, mate. They're not the only ones that want to push their fingers into their eyes. Quick side note. 
Some of these orcs look more like Gringot goblins than they do orcs. Just saying. Ooh, and watch out, kids, because here comes the big bad guy who's been uh, commanding the orcs. It's Ada, Ada, Ada. Hey, it's Uncle Benjamin. He's back. He's not actually dead. I mean, oh, I mean, you're in the wrong series, mate, but. Good to know you're still alive. All jokes aside though, there is quite an interesting theme in this uh, in this scene because it's the first time you see a non-orc character have like compassion towards an orc character. So one of the orcs was injured in the last episode and uh, Adar puts him okay, mercifully out of his misery by uh, stabbing him. The only thing is, he, he appears to stab him in the kidney. Hey, I don't know, maybe orc biology is different, but uh, that sure looks like the kidney to me. And uh, that, isn't that supposed to be just like a really slow and painful death? And in some cases, not even lethal? On the real though, it's nice to see a decent actor do some decent acting. And you know, Ishmael does a decent job of bouncing off him as well. Theo, Theo, you can either help me or you can make it harder. Hey, hold on, have I been watching a porn parody this whole time? This makes so much sense now. Yo, where are the boobies at though? Oh, it was very kind of that orc to uh, allow the suspense to build just before attacking. Very professional. Young blood. Why are the orcs in this show so like weirdly sexual? We had the slightly questionable behaviour towards Arendir in the the start of the last episode. Now this. Since when did orcs become nonces? What is going on? You have to be kidding me. I mean, I know the orcs can't go out in sunlight, but did that did that guy just do like the, the vampire cape meme? <laughs> is this a billion dollar show or is this a school stage play? What the Hey, Rivendell Vice is back for season two, baby! Killer Brimble's got his moo moo. Killer Brimble's got his moo moo. What? Nothing. Just for a moment standing there, you were the very image of your father. Ooh, what a flirt. Okay, for real, how is Elrond getting to and from Khazad Doom so quickly? Are they building like, are they building Eurostar routes in Middle Earth now as well? Dare to stop hitting your brother. We're playing the knocking game. We'll knock it off. They're not showing the dwarf kid. Why are they not showing the dwarf kids? Like in the last episode, they had them, them big mask helmet things on. And this time they're just shouting from a, like, I don't know what they're doing, but they don't want to show them. What? <laughs> show the dwarf kids, God damn it! They messed them up, didn't they? They messed them up real good. Uh, <laughs> let us see them, Amazon, come on! Show the dwarfs, show the dwarfs. He was off to mine quartz chasm today. Woo-wee! That's a whole lot of leg. And we're back with Isildur and his sister, and it would appear that his sister's gone from bad overdubbing to just straight up bad English, and she's now talking like a toddler for some reason. What are you doing up here? I had a dinner. I had a dinner. Oh yes, I had a dinner on a plate. Oh, here we go again. Place your hand upon it. I must warn you. I have touched Palantiri before, but you have not touched this one. First they gave us, you have not seen what I have seen, and now we've got, you have not touched what I have touched. Even when she's extremely distressed, she still can't bring herself to move her face. <sighs> Can we just play that one more time and pretend like it actually happened and it wasn't just a vision? Oh, that's better. I know what it is to be the only one. The only one who sees. Ah, oh, yeah, right on time. Yes, we know, Galadriel. We have not seen what you have seen. Oh, you, you're a precious little pudding cup, aren't you? And we're back with Deus Ex Arendir. Loosen your arm. We'll loosen your lips. An elf is never late. Nor is he early. Wait, that's not how it goes. Hey, look, your mum's hot, right? And I'm just trying to hit that. So if I save your life, definitely going to be in there. So come with me. And we're traveling back over Titty Mountain to go visit the dwarves again. My father single-handedly sailed to Valinor. Uh, yeah, well, my dad works at Nintendo and he could beat your dad up. So 
Yeah. So great were his deeds that the Valar lifted him beyond the bounds of this world to forever carry the evening star across the sky. And the Valar bought me some mascara from Zephora and a nice blouse and said, Yas, Elrond, slay. And then Elrond goes all Luther Vandross on Durin and tells him go kiss his dad or something. And we all live happily ever after. The rest of the episode's boring as shit and I'm not talking about it. What did you think of episode four? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram as well now. Uh, I've posted absolutely sod all on there, but uh, you know. Isn't that an exciting offer? And as always, a big shout out to all the patrons and the channel members. We have the Giga Chads. We have the Steve the Goat, Pozzabon, Saeed, Brennis, and Dr. Melski. Thank you very much, boys. Then we've got the tier one patrons, A. Proman, Sammy Moraine, Damon Spike, Chloe Bond, Lord Claret, Brett Leafers, Arkham Spider, Sammy JW, MG Virgil. And then, of course, we've got the channel members, Kuno Sacco, Yarn Witch, McGrail13, and we're welcoming St. Nemo. Welcome to the channel, my friends. And don't forget, if you become a channel member or a patron by the end of this month, I'm getting an art piece done with all your names on it, and it's going on the back wall. But there we go. Hopefully, you can join me for the next video. I hope to see you then. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you real soon.